You think you're better looking than uh, Denzel Washington? Yeah. Do you really? Oh, yeah. What if that was put to a vote and you were outvoted? And if I had the money and the power and the, and the uh, deal making movies, I'd get ten times more women than him. Remember those sad, delusional Nazi crackpots we all used to make fun of? I don't want to blow you away here, but the truth is that probably a whole bunch of white people that haven't joined Gordon and the Klan have changed a bit. In 2017, the far right is experiencing something of a reformation. You will have seen this video appear several times on your timeline already, I'm sure. Um, it was at a conference in America hosted by a far right organization called the National Policy Institute. Uh, which is run by a, some, a man called Richard Spencer. Now there's been much press generated about the alt-right and its emergence, which is a really interesting subject, but I'm drawn to another person who spoke at this conference. This guy. His nom de guerre is Millennial Woes. Now Millennial Woes runs a moderately successful YouTube channel. Uh, just yesterday the Scottish Daily Record identified him and he turned out to be uh, some random guy who lives in central Scotland. In response, he posted a message on his YouTube channel, which is kind of hilarious because it says, I have never promoted hate and never would. He just thinks that other races are genetically inferior, lack his intelligence and should be removed from British society. <laughs> Wait, why is everyone getting so angry? Here is Woes speaking to The Atlantic. Two or three years ago, I finally came to understand what is called the Jewish question, that there are problems with the Jewish people. And that was difficult because uh, I really didn't want to become an anti-Semite. It's like the biggest cliche, the biggest right-wing cliche. And here he is addressing the conference that we saw earlier. You can't really explain why bestiality is wrong. Can anyone? I'll shoot your answers down if you do, because I, I've, I've gone through them all. Now, I've always been morbidly fascinated by the far right particularly far-right politics in the UK, and I'm trying to figure out where Millennial Woes fits into the grander scheme of things. Millennial Woes has been elevated to minor celebrity status within the internet's far-right community. Um, here's a track someone mixed of his re reworking of the John Lennon song, Imagine. You may say I'm a xenophobe, but you're helping to destroy a civilization. Imagine he addresses his audience from his bedroom and he's unshaven and clothed in his dressing gown, often chain-smoking. He's quite an unlikely leader, um, but I've watched uh, pretty much most all of the 600 videos on his YouTube channel. It's no small feat, a lot of them are really tedious, <laughs> um, and it was quite a marathon. Two and a half years ago, I called myself a neo-reactionary. And in fact, even today, when I share something on Twitter, I still append the NRX uh, suffix, the hashtag. Since January 2014, things have changed. The various bodies of thought have become a bit more defined. The alt-right has simplified and basically become straightforward white nationalism. He describes himself as a neo-reactionary, which basically means bog-standard Nazi views, dressed up with some philosophical babble about an ethno-state, which is a nation that has been ethnically cleansed of all the races but the white race. Her genes, her precious genes, are now going to be contaminated with Africa. Everyone was Turkish. Oh. It's the most extreme right-wing position you hold. <laughs> I think I'm pro-slavery. He believes that Western civilization is in decline because white people have all become nihilistic within a culture that has lost its meaning, and soon that society will collapse, at which point white people will unite to war with other races. It's all really, really bleak stuff. And it's not just a gloomy aesthetic. None of Millennial Woe's videos portray what a a clinician would describe as a strength-based approach. For someone who talks incessantly about celebrating his history, culture and race, his channel is excruciatingly joyless. Take this video entitled Classical Music and Intelligence. It was one of the first I watched. I expected for him to share his love of Wagner or something, which I'm, I'm sure he's a fan of. But no, it's a four-minute complaint about someone he works with. 
uh, this girl came in and, and she, uh, she was working with me and she said, who put on that shite? She had broad Scots, so it was more like, um, <clears throat> who put on that shite? And, I mean, she was just rebelling against it, saying that it was a racket. She actually used that word as well, a racket. We'll take this video, uh, taken on the eve of that big American speech. He's standing outside the restaurant looking at a group of protesters who have created something of a carnival atmosphere. He actually seems bothered that he hasn't been recognised by them and that, and that they're having fun. I mean, it's just fucking ridiculous. It's just nonsense. Yet again, it seems primarily a social thing rather than anything intellectual, moral or spiritual. It's, it's fucking nonsense. I think they don't know anything about this. I think they maybe recognise Richard Spencer. I, I don't think they've watched our videos, I don't think they've read our blogs. I think they've just heard, oh, they're really bad people, so, you know, it's just a bunch of weaklings, degenerates, reprobates and losers. Some of them are mixed race, some of them are gay, one of them's still twerking away to this gay man. I mean, it's just farcical. Then there's the art college thing. I came up with them in through my own thinking when I was 18 at art college. Believe me, I know this. I went to a very good art college. Now, I pro possibly could have gone into this in my video about art college. And I... I'm sort of nervous about saying that because I did go to art college in London. And it seems that going to art college is the only significant life experience he has had in his 34 years. Uh, well, Jared travelled to Africa, Kevin travelled to Jamaica, I travelled to London. <laughs> it seems to be something he returns to over and over again. When he describes his interaction with people of other ethnicities, he returns to his uh, university experience. I went to art college in London, coming from Edinburgh in Scotland. Edinburgh was virtually 100% white. The halls of residence was extremely multiracial and multicultural. And I found that very uh, dizzying and horrible. I didn't like it. And I was chatting to the Chinese students and all that, the Japanese. And then this English guy t turned up. And the conversation between him and me is immediately so much more natural. I find it all rather sad. London is, isn't for everyone. It's a big, unforgiving place. But it doesn't necessarily crush someone like it apparently did him. This feels like Freudian displacement, like someone who was hurt wants to hurt. There, there, are, there are some parts of his channel where he talks quite frankly about his own clinical depression. It just pl splatters you into... A universe of blackness, where there is no light, there is no optimism, then there is no meaning. There is only danger and doom. <laughs> and I remember this day just realising how bad everything was, how bad a condition I was in. But it just, it didn't seem like a bad condition, it seemed that this was just the truth. It, it, I had found the truth. Everything's fucking mad. Everything is completely empty. There is nothing. There is absolutely nothing. As I became more happy, my worldview became more simple and gave rise to a mission. And that mission was uh, very straightforward. It was to do whatever I can to help save the white race. It might be, I mean, this channel is therapy for me. What hell kind of therapy is this? He's, he's kind of latching onto the negative aspects of his personality and just amplifying them. So why does he have such appeal? Millennial Woes, I, I think, is just the kind of person that we want in the alt-right. He's just, he has a unique perspective. He's someone who is coming from somewhere. Uh, and he's kind of, I could say, millennial woes, and you could say that about me too, we're kind of the hipster whisperers. I was aware of a problem in the alt-right, which is that it is largely populated with people who are depressed and people who are neat. And neither of those conditions is a healthy one to be in, and I felt a duty to help them. He is brutally honest and seems self-aware. Um, he has quite a neat turn of phrase, which has been lacking in some of the rock scum that have gone before him. Um, he speaks to a generation of people who live at home with their parents. 
who have a high cultural capital but are economically disadvantaged. Um, youth, well, youth unemployment is at an all-time high and their only st- stimulation is to wed themselves to the internet in their bedrooms. And let's be clear, suffering from depression isn't a cause of racism. There's something else going on here. Millennial Woes isn't just any racist, he's a genocidal racist. I think my channel does recruit people to the reactosphere because I am a uh, halfway point between uh, <laughs> the mainstream and some people in the reactosphere who are more extreme than I am. Or at least some people in the alt-right. Uh, and and there, But this position g- gives me a leeway to be just to ask questions. And I don't have to be certain of anything. I mean, I've said, I've said over and over again that I don't condone violence, I condemn violence, I'm not interested in uh, inciting violence. Now, advocating might or might not be the correct term. It might be more precise to say that he bays, he luxuriates in genocidal fantasies. The only thing that will take care of itself is the oncoming bloodshed that these people in the EU and in national governments uh, have, have worked to bring about. I don't know if there's a, a gentle or acceptable way to say it, but I wonder if these uh, refugees, vulnerable though they are, should be seen rather as, um, well, in the enemy. Maybe we should blow up their boats, send a torpedo and just fuck them up. You're going to get lots of men, women and children losing arms and legs and then drowning. I mean, it's horrendous. It's the, like the worst death you could have. But <sighs> I don't know. What's the alternative? So I'm not really despairing. I'm, well, I am despairing because that isn't ever going to be done. They're changing the hate speech laws uh, so that Holocaust denial is illegal. And basically any criticism of the Jews as a group is illegal. Now, I don't have any particular views on the Holocaust as it happens. I don't. I actually don't really care one way or the other. It's not an interesting subject to me. But I yeah, think I, I it's think outrageous think, that people uh, can't discuss it. He isn't, of course, talking about serious academic debate about the Holocaust, which already occurs, but of whether or not the Holocaust happened. Um, I take no view on European hate speech laws other than to note that Teaching the controversy is a well-known tactic amongst um, young of creationists and anyone with nutty view to try and force their beliefs into mainstream discourse. And it just reflects the kind of crowd he's running with. I mean, either there was or was not an attempt at a final solution of the Jewish question. I could care less. And either that would or would not, we could get to it, be a good thing. But I was just wanting to let you clarify. I set my sights higher. I could care less if it did happen didn't happen. It's just a historical, it's 50 years ago. Gee whiz, we're almost in the year 2000. When the Nazi salutes went viral at the MPI conference, um, this became known in far-right circles as Hailgate. Uh, listen to uh, Woes discussing it online with some Dutch comrades. What do, you, uh, what do you think about that, the whole Hailgate thing? Well, I don't want to disavow the Nazis. I mean, they're they're all right i'm not a nazi myself but you know but the thing is if you do that in the netherlands you go to jail it is a punishable offense um so you know if we start doing things like that and if we get too associated with ideas and things like that uh well the organization is done basically we can't right. we can't do that yeah i mean it's the same with me and you know, i i have this problem that this is why there aren't going to be open hangouts this year because it's too dodgy i think americans seem to think that hate speech laws are a joke they, yeah. i don't think they really understand it is actually real you know people can go to jail i think it's important for the sake of each other and and maybe ourselves as well that we don't show that in public that we don't make a thing out of it listen to him talking about hailgate with some with one of his youtube enablers sargon of Akkad. I'm I'm really I'm really reluctant to call anyone a Nazi. I think that's a pointless label. Yeah, so the but, thought terminating cliche, but yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I'm not surprised that the a sensationalist media pick up on that and obsess over it. No, not at all. It's that's, but it, it's, it's it's like it's like delivering them a gift almost. Yeah. Imagine how many clicks they got out of that. Yeah, I mean, if I were Richard Spencer, if I were in charge of this, I would say, 
in future, anyone who does that is just going to be thrown out immediately because it's you're being a dick. You're you're uh, yeah. risking terrible PR that we just don't need. I mean, but no not, one needs that. I, d I don't see why you, I, I mean, and I'm going to have to keep qualifying this. I don't agree with uh, the goals of the ethno-nationalist alt-right, but I don't see why you would necessarily want to mimic the past in that way instead of forging forward with something that might be more relevant to the modern world. Mealy-mouthed enablement. This is an I ideology you shouldn't just not subscribe to, but confront at every turn. Um, you shouldn't give PR advice and find ways to make genocide more relevant. But for your viewing pleasure, here is some, I guess, quote-unquote, thought-terminating cliché. There's a huge contingent of the Scottish population who will absolutely fucking mow down the Muslims when the, when the time comes. Yeah. And, you know, I don't doubt that for a second. The full context for this particular clip is rather chilling because in it, he actually names names for his list within the same breath. But I think that we should be taking down names because after the collapse, I hope that people, I hope that certain people meet their, their just deserts. I hope that some people are punished, executed, as they should be. The, I mean, the damage that these people are doing to Europe, as I see. One for the firing squad, I think. I think it's important that we keep that behind closed doors and don't put it on YouTube videos. We are going to get emotional sometimes. It's only, I mean, it would be ridiculous if we didn't. I believe uh, Mazuma Woes takes a long view uh, where people like him and his friends can toxify our culture um, enough that they can finally lose all their inhibitions and unleash this genocide and create this glorious white ethno state. But I, I still can't help but feel a twinge of, of pity for the guy. I think this is all to do with honesty. Uh, I'm very interested in this nowadays. I mentioned it in, in the video, This the importance of being honest with, with oneself. Because it's the, it's the first step to being honest with other people and with the world. And then experiencing the world honestly, sincerely.